Hey everyone, welcome to section 0.5, adding probabilities, and we're going to start this section with some vocab words. So guys, do your best to make sure that you get these down on your note sheet, and also that you have a decent understanding of what they mean. So let's go ahead and start this off with the probability model. All it is is a mathematical model used to represent the outcomes of an experiment. So say we were had pieces of paper with the each letter of the word player on them and we wanted a model to represent us drawing out the letter P out of a hat. Well, our model, since there are one, two, three, four, five, six letters in player, we could use a dice. That dice would be the mathematical model. A uniform or simple probability model all it means is that all outcomes are equally likely, so on this dice, the 1 would be just as likely as rolling a 2, a 2 would be just as likely as rolling a 3. Next, theoretical probability. Theoretical, now be careful, in theory, theoretical, what should occur in a probability experiment? So we have the number of favorable outcomes over the number of possible outcomes. Theoretical, think of Flipping a coin. Flipping a coin should be 50-50, but is it always going to be 50-50? Probably not. Now, experimental probability is what actually happens. So the estimated from the observed simulations are experiments, so you perform the simulation or experiment, and you keep track of what actually happens. So let's take a look at some examples. So what is theoretical probability of the spinner landing on green if it is spun four times? Now since it is theoretical probability, we're actually not going to spin the spinner, but we're going to use the theory or theoretical probability. Well, what would be the probability of this spinner landing on green? Well, there is four evenly shaped areas, and one of them is green, so you have one out of four and you would take it times the number of times you're spinning it so one fourth times four is one so the th using theoretical probability this spinner would land on green once now with experimental probability let's see how many times it actually does land on green so the first one is orange the second one as the anticipation builds is green one. Next is green. We have two for green. And then we're going to spin it one more time. Just imagine if we did this 16 times. Take a while. And I'm going to call that orange. So, is theoretical probability always going to be right? No, it's not because it doesn't have to happen every single time over a lot of cases over performing this experiment a hundred a thousand a million times it's going to get closer to that theoretical probability of that one fourth or happening a quarter of the time but just with a small sample size with a small um, amount of times we perform the experiment it's not always going to be what it should be so again theoretical probability is what it should be experimental probability is what actual actually happened another couple vocab words a simple event is an event that has a single outcome so an example would be rolling a six on a dice you only have one outcome of that event a compound event would be two or more single events so you could be rolling a six on a dice and then flipping a tail with a coin right so you would have one and then two single events you obviously could have more so next vocab word is mutually exclusive right mutually exclusive means that there are no common outcomes when there are no common outcomes between our probability we just add them together so say this event here was we were picking even numbers and odd numbers since even numbers and odd numbers do not share anything, it is mutually exclusive. So then we would just take the probability of this happening and the probability of this happening and just add them together. So mutually exclusive, no common outcomes. That's key. Mutually exclusive, no common outcomes. 
not mutually exclusive. They have common outcomes. So by definition, we're adding the probability of one event and two events, but now we are subtracting what they have in common. So let's take a look at even numbers and multiples of three. Multiples of three would be three, six, nine, twelve. Well, are there even are there any even numbers that are multiples of three? We look at our even numbers, we have two, four, six, eight, ten, and 12 and multiples of 3 would be 3, 6, 9, 12. What are in common? The 6 and the 12. So let's just say we're adding these together for not mutually exclusive. So I'm going to go ahead and just use the whole probability. So even numbers, how many even numbers do I have? I have 6 out of 10. So I have 6 over 10, I'm going to add that to the probability of multiples of 3, so I have 4 out of 10. But now we have to take away, take away what's even number and a multiple of 3, so I'm going to subtract what's in the middle, 2 over 10, to end up with 8 tenths, and then we can simplify that to be 4 fifths. And in case you were wondering, this is known as a Venn diagram. You won't have Venn diagrams, but we can walk through it and hopefully maybe set up a Venn diagram. All right, so our first example here with number one. Leroy has six nickels, four pennies, and three dimes in his pocket. He takes one coin from his pocket at random. What is the probability that is that a penny or a nickel? Well, does the penny or nickel share any common outcomes? No, they are not, because if it's a penny, it's a penny, and if it's a nickel, it's a nickel. So this is a mutually exclusive event. Now let's go ahead and set it up. So we are looking for the probability of a penny or a nickel. Now what is the probability that it will be a penny? Well, how many pennies do we have? We have four pennies, but what's that going to be over? It's going to be over our total, and our total is going to be 13. All right, guys, we have to make sure we always know what our total is because more times than not, it is going to go on the bottom of our probability. So we have four thirteenths. Now nickels, how many nickels do we have? We have six nickels over the total amount of coins we have, which is 13. We add them together. So the probability of being a penny or a nickel will be 10 over 13. Next example. A card is selected from a deck of 52 cards. What is the probability that it is a red card or a face card? Well, are there red cards that are face cards? Yes, there is. So, since there is, since there is it is not mutually exclusive. And for those of you non-card players out there, just to go through a deck of cards real quick, there are 26 red cards. There are three face cards in each color and there are 12 face cards in a deck of cards. So now let's see if we can line up the probability. Since it is not mutually exclusive, what are or what is the probability of being a red card or a face card? Well, let's start with red. What's the probability of it being a red card. Well, there's 26 red cards out of a total of 52 cards. So we have 26 over a total of 52 plus the probability of a face card. How many face cards do we have in the deck? We have 12 face cards, so it's going to be 12 over 52. Now we have to subtract out the likeness or the same thing that we counted twice. Do we have any face cards that are red? Yes, we do. We have hearts and diamonds, so we're going to take out the six cards that we counted that are face cards and that are red cards. So we're subtracting the red face cards, and again, it's going to be over 52. So then it is 32 over 52. You can punch that into your handy dandy calculator, or you can take out a 4 on top and on bottom to figure out that our probability of selecting a red or a face card is 8 thirteenths for our probability. 
Next, suppose that you have 900 pints of ice cream available for sale, 200 are sugarless, 500 vanilla, and 50 are sugarless vanilla. What is the probability that the pint selected at random is either sugarless or vanilla? Well, sugarless or vanilla, look at here, we have sugarless and vanilla that are the same kind. So, is it going to be mutually exclusive or not mutually exclusive? It is not mutually exclusive because we are counting some th same things twice. So now, we have to figure out the probability of sugarless, probability of vanilla, and what we counted twice. So, how many are sugarless? We have 200 that are sugarless over how many uh, how many is our total? Over 900. What is the probability of being vanilla? We have 500 over 900. Now we have to subtract out everything we counted twice. Twice. Well, we have 50, so it's 50 minus or sorry, 50 over 900 to get us a grand total of 650 over 900, which simplifies to 13 eighteenths. Next, for number four, two dice are rolled. Find the probability that the sum is 10 or it is two fives. Is this mutually exclusive or not mutually exclusive? Well, let's think for a little bit the sum of 10. How can we roll two dice and get the sum of 10? Well, we can roll a 5, then a 5, a 6, then a 4, or a 4, then a 6. How about two fives? There's only one way to roll two fives, and that is actually rolling two fives. So, let's take a peek at this. We have the sum of two tens. Well, how many times can that occur? That can occur three out of how many different uh, things can we roll with two dice? Well, we have six possible outcomes for one dice, six for the other. So do the basic uh, counting principle. We have 36 total outcomes. So we have three over 36 plus how many ways can we roll fives? One over 36. Did we count anything twice? Yes, because we have a fives here, fives there. So we have to subtract one over 36, which gives us three, whoops, I put it two, three, 36, which simplifies to one twelfth for our final answer. One more probability question here. Now, we have um, 10 freshmen, eight sophomores, and two juniors in Algebra 2. One of those, or of these students, nine freshmen, two sophomores, one junior are males. Now let's select a student at random, find the probability that the student is a sophomore or a male. Now, do we have sophomores that are males? Yes, we do. So since we do, we are not mutually exclusive. Let's see if we can put this together. So how many sophomores do we have? We have eight sophomores in the whole class. And how many are in the total class? We have 20. So plus, how many males do we have? We have 10, 12 males, 12 out of 20. Now, how many sophomores are males? We have two sophomores that are males. So we go 2 over 20. And so now we add this up. It is 18 20ths for our probability. We simplify to get 9 tenths. Hey, I'm going to speed it up a little bit here. Odds. Odds are the number of favorable outcomes over the number of unfavorable outcomes. So when we look at odds of rolling a six on a dice, how many sixes are there on a dice? There is one, which is a favorable outcome. Now, how many not sixes, which would be unfavorable outcomes, are there on a dice? There are five un unfavorable outcomes. Together, odds add up to the total compared with probability of rolling a six. Well, we have one which is what we want, and then probability has the total on the bottom, which would be 1 6. How about odds of rolling a 2 or a 3? Favorable outcomes, we would have 2. How many not 2s or 3s do we have on the dice? 4, compared with the probability of 2 over the total, which would be 6. You can simplify this to 1 -third. Have a good rest of your day.